Hi everyone, Talara here and welcome back to Sea of Stars. Our last episode was a pretty action-packed one. We defeated a dweller, got another party member, and learned a ton of lore about the Fleshmancer. So before we head to Misa Island, which is our next objective, uh, our friend Teeks here actually has two more stories for us. And I've been really enjoying these stories because they've been giving us a lot of background information, filling in a lot of lore gaps that I've had with the game so far. So let's start today's episode with a little story time. First up, Moon Cradle and the Elder Mist. It was as compelling as invitations could get. All of the best artisans the world over received it. A personalized letter signed by the mysterious Great Eagle. Enclosed were directions, along with the promise of a worthwhile endeavor and a touch of magic. They gathered en masse on the barren island to the southwest, hoping to meet the mysterious Great Eagle who had signed their invitations. But all they found when they arrived were three vials, two of which were sealed. When they opened the first vial, it became clear to all that there was even more to the Great Eagle than what the stories had shared. As the cork was removed, a solar eclipse occurred, and magical light flew in from above the sky, reshaping the peninsula into a crescent. At the end of its dance, the light coalesced on the cliffside and gave birth to a tree so beautiful it appeared to belong in a dream. The celestial willow rose up while the grass turned to its signature purple hue. As if the magic had spoken directly to their minds, the builders knew exactly what they had to do. They would build the town of Moon Cradle and hold a festival by the celestial willow twice a year in expectation of the Great Eagle's visit. Unless they happened to be born in Moon Cradle, children of the Solstice would never know their real parents. So that no one would feel different or rejected, Moon Cradle was built around one core tenant, community. They built a common dormitory for everyone, along with a single shared dining hall. Zenith Academy was also clearly visible in all of their minds. They built it, but had no idea how to give it its final touch. That was when the second vial uncorked itself. Glowing runes flew out and embedded themselves into Zenith Academy's foundation, enchanting it with levitation magic. The school in the sky was born. As if to celebrate the builder's efforts, the third seal was undone, and out of the tiny vial flowed a seemingly endless stream of mist. It permeated Evermist Island, giving it its name. In the end, a peculiar voice spoke to their minds. The voice provided guidelines for the education of Solstice Warriors, and stressed the importance of seeking out the Elder Mist once their training was complete. As the voice grew faint, the three vials disappeared. Since that day, the people of Moon Cradle have held the festival to welcome children of the Solstice, taking it upon themselves to nurture them until they come of age. Solstice Warriors would come and go, protecting the world while attempting to fulfill the prophecies bestowed upon them by the Elder Mist. As the battle continues between Dwellers and Solstice Warriors, Moon Cradle represents the hope that someday, Guardian Gods may rise and bring about lasting peace. The end. Cool! So, basically, I think Rashan created Moon Cradle and Zenith Academy and the Elder Mist, right? The immortal alchemist presented three vials, and with it... Came Moon Cradle. That's very cool. All right, our other tale is the Nomads of the Sea. It was like a dream. No one believed it at first, that their seemingly eternal journey could finally be over. Why then? And with the current Oracle of Tides being so young, who could confirm the long-awaited discovery? But in their heart of hearts, they knew, before them, appearing even more vividly than in their visions, stood the Tower of Ansudlo. And so it was that the nomads of the sea, who had traversed abyssal plains since time immemorial, would settle at long last. Having reached their promised land, they started building next to the tower. In Jakari village, generations would come and go, each following the guidance of their respective Oracle of Tides. Since that day, they have been the guardians of Ansudlo, waiting for those destined to open its gate. In this new era, memories of their nomadic days live on in classic tales, retelling the deeds of great explorers and formidable warriors. The most popular by far is the Battle of Fates Guyot, a story with so many versions it may very well be just a myth. To the best of their abilities, historians have pieced together hints from various retellings of the battle, some even dedicating their lives to the subject. 
It is generally accepted as fact that the Takari almost went extinct while crossing the territory of a giant sea slug. What happened next is a matter of much debate, depending on the interpretation of key passages and the credibility of certain sources. Some claim that the Battle of Fate Skuya never happened, dismissing it as a fabrication meant to scare off would-be pillagers of ancient Okari treasure. This theory is mostly seen as a stretch, however, given that such looters' inability to breathe underwater would already be deterrent enough. Some historians say that the giant sea slug was defeated when the Takari made their last stand on a flat-topped seamount, giving the story its title. For others, the scriptures about sunken ruins are simply too consistent to be ignored. According to this version of events, the nomads sealed the monster away when they realized they couldn't defeat it. The key was then split into three equal parts, each waiting somewhere in the deep blue for future heroes brave enough to rid the world of this threat. The end. Interesting. Teeks, thank you, as always, for those magical stories. Lots of old stuff we may or may not need. Voltrade says I can figure it out on my own. Alright, guys, well, after all that storytelling, I think it's time for us to hit the road. And by road, I mean ocean. Actually, no, wait. Rashan has a garden. Mesa Island's to the northeast, the one with the giant stone head. You don't want to talk about the beautiful garden you've set up in this dome? <laughs> did it so fast. Alright, anyway. Off we go! So let's take a look at the map. We're going basically straight north. Ah, yep, there's the head. Misa hike. I don't know if we have any Jar Jar Binks fans <laughs> in the audience right now. Fans or haters. But I just want to say, every time we say Misa, I think of Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> from the prequel trilogy of Star Wars. Now, 150 years should do it. Whoa! Good morning, Kukar. Master, have you come to check on my work? As you can see, I have not faltered. I commend your dedication. Thank you, Master. The water has risen quite a lot. How long was I asleep? An irrelevant matter. Aferol left a long time ago, and his acolytes have lost most of their powers. It will not happen again anytime soon. I understand. How can I help? These people are your friends. I understand. Your turn. I love how Garl takes the lead. He's so sweet. Hello, Kukar! Greetings, friend. Can you help us in any way? My main duty is to hold Misa Island at this precise altitude. Anything I can do without hindering my grip, I will gladly oblige, friend. Well then, could you remove the barrier so we could get onto it? Oh, surely you know of the evil castle that sits there. It is no place to send a friend. That's still where we are headed. I will not send friends into danger. I refuse. Oh. Can we do a little bit more time magic? Good morning, Kukar. Master, have you come to check on my work? As you can see, I have not faltered. I'm getting some deja vu here, folks. I commend your dedication. Thank you, Master. How can I help? These people are adventurers on a very important mission and require your help. I understand. Ha <laughs> Try again. Just same thing? Please. Hello, Kukar! Greetings, adventurer. Have you met my brothers, Extol and Yeet? 
I can help you get to them in no time. Just sail into my mouth and choose a destination. That's... okay, that does sound useful. But for now, what we need is for you to remove the barrier on the island. I see. One moment, please. There it is. Thanks, Kukar. Naturally. Safe travels, adventurers. Up we go, then. Lead the way. Well, that was easy. <laughs> All it took was a little time magic and two eerily similar conversations. The barrier has been dispelled, and up the mountain we go. Autumn Hills. Oh, this place is so pretty. I love the colors. Autumn is personally my favorite season. I There's nothing more beautiful, in my opinion, than the changing of the tree colors. So this is going to be great. We've got two talks here. I love the music, too. Cool, Rashawn just throws potions at people. All food down here, so we need to backtrack. Oh, this music, these visuals, this is fantastic. <laughs> Found oaken armor. Nice. Hardened by craftsmen of a bygone era. Oh, actually. We should uh, equip some of these on Rashan. Yeah, he uses a withered cork right now, which is apparently in need of replacement, so keep an eye out. Whoa, what are these things? They're like plant people. Grassassin! <laughs> That's so funny! Gra grass assassins! Alright, let's see what kind of skills Rashawn has. Abeyance deals arcane damage while pulling enemies together. Ebb removes a random lock on the target, plus one lock if timed. And Petrichor, Soothing Mist Heals the Party. Cool. Obviously you have to experiment with those abilities and get the timing down and that kind of thing.
Perfect. We got a switch. We've also got a scroll. Valir and Rashawn learn the combo skill Arcane Moons. So as you can see, there's a new um, element of damage now, too. Arcane. So getting a new companion brings lots of new gameplay mechanics our way. Some people say this is a bad spot for a shop, but I bet others will follow in my tracks. <laughs> I mean, it is kind of a niche place for a shop, uh, but, you know, do your thing, dude. Alright, we can buy open armor for Zale. And then, oh, we're so close to the music sheet number four. Anything we can sell here? I mean, I have 77 red berries, I can probably sell a few of those. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Now we can get music sheet number four. Just in case we're never back at this very um, out of the way shop. chest. Just have to do some platforming. Whoa. Oh, that didn't bring us anywhere. Oh, wait. Can we move this? Yeah. So we get the chest. Found a maple cork. Heavy for its size. And then I guess we'll need to move this again to get where we need to go. all the platforming we, we gotta do here. It's fun.
So many assassins around here. Oh, what are these things? Okay. It's gonna be hard to get rid of all these guys because there's so many. You can't um, target them all at once. Cooker Supreme and see how much damage we can do. Not enough, unfortunately. However, Garl is our tank, so he should be able to survive this onslaught. Holy moly. Alright, Zale's back. Good. Who has the most HP? You do! Which means you get the attack. Another Cooker Supreme should hopefully finish it off. Boom! Whew! That was a tough fight. Looks like it's time for a swim. A recipe for a parfait. Yummy. So much shrimp down here. Alright. If we lower this bridge, or this ladder, sorry, got a nice shortcut if we ever need to go backwards. Hello there! Fancy battle! Just you again, girl. Welcome back, guys. Really go for a campfire sometime soon. Oh, that didn't work. Hmm. Oh, there we go. For some reason, the gang just didn't want to jump the first time around. Thank you. 
All right, one left. Close to level up. One more battle should do it. Whoa! He literally went off the map. I I couldn't couldn't see where he went. It's a little unfair. It's hard to time your attack when you can't even see the enemy. So much damage, that is awesome. There we go. There's the level up. Alright, I want to get physical attack for Valir. I want to get... I wanted to get magic attack, but there's no um, opportunity to do that, so I guess we'll do physical attack. Physical attack. The more damage we do, the more monsters we can defeat. That's my thinking right now. Perfect. We should heal. whole day in these woods. Whoa, that's a really good view of the castle there. The moon is coming up. Ah, and there's the campfire. Beautiful. Just what we need. Let's set up camp, shall we? Clockwork Castle is on the east side of Mesa Island. We'll have to cross it on foot. It's nice to stretch my legs a bit. Must be hard thinking about this whole Erlina and Brugave situation. I'm here, okay? Mesa Island. It was about time. Do some cooking? Yeah, we can make parfait. It's all in the name. guys, our journey through Mesa Island has been fun so far and very scenic, but as you can see, we've still got a ways to go before we can get down to that castle. The group is all rested, so let's grab our rest too, and hopefully I'll see you guys back here again real soon for another episode of Sea of Stars.